Hello, algebra students. Welcome back. We are jumping in a 3.2 example two. And so you should be on the next page in your notes. We just finished example one. And I want to talk to you about some vocabulary here. You really need to know these. You're, you need to know this for the rest of the year. This is definitely going to be on the state test. Okay? So I'm going to mark that. This is one of those things. Please trust me. I know what I'm talking about. The state's going to have questions that refer to, hey, what's the domain? Or what's the range? And you need to know what they're talking about. All right, very simply, the domain is your X value, your input value. What are you plugging in to like an equation? What are you plugging in? That's your domain. The range is your Y value and your out, that's also your output. So I plugged in my X and, and so I did some math and now I've got this new number, that's my range, okay? Now here's an example. They gave us this relation. Remember, a relation is just a set of ordered pairs. Okay, so we don't want the terminology to mess us up. There's just no reason to get messed up and tripped over because we don't know what words mean when I tell you. Okay, so a relation is just a set of ordered pairs. So remember what I emphasized in the last uh, example. The first number of an ordered pair is your x. The second one is your y. So when you're writing out your domain, you're listing them. Here's what you would list. That's your domain. Negative 1, 4, negative 3, and negative 2. That's what you would list. And here's the domain. The range would be your second number in each of your ordered pairs, okay? And I'll do two lines under each one just to distinguish it, okay? And so you can see it's 1, negative 7, positive 5, and negative 2, and that's your range. So it's really, this particular example is all about can I identify, if I gave you a set of ordered pairs right now, could you list the domain could you list the range? Okay, the domain, those are all your X's, and the range are all of your Y's. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay, let's talk about example two right here. We've got the basics, I did a little background for you, and now we're ready to take the information I gave to you up top about domain and range, and we're gonna apply it to example two. So we have a relation and it's a graph, okay? And that's what we see down here in the bottom left of your notes, there's a graph. They don't really tell us what the X is or what the Y is, it doesn't matter, but we do need to identify the domain and the range. Okay, so I'm gonna put a D with a little colon here, and then that D stands for domain. And we're going to try and figure out, you know, what numbers make up the domain. They gave us two points. Did you notice that they graphed this point and this point? But they connected it with a line, which means all the numbers in between are included in this answer. Now, if they had just only graphed those two points, I would write those two points down and I would list the two X's beside D and the two Y's beside R. I'll, I'll soon write an R up there. Now what I want you to notice is right here, let's start back here at this point. Do you see where my pencil tip is touching? That's the lower of the two points. Now I'm going to track that down to the X axis. What number am I next to or right on top of on the X axis? That's right, the one. Now go over here, put your pencil tip on the upper point, because that's the edge, Those are the, that's the perimeter, that's the outer barrier of your domain. And let's go all the way down to the X. Okay, and what number do you see there? All right, so you see our lower point lines up with positive one on the X. Our higher point lines up with positive three on the X. So our domain lies between and includes 
one and three. Now, this is a little bit of a throwback to the last chapter because we learned how to write a range of numbers. If you are trying to write an answer between and including one to three, then you would use your inequality symbols. You would start with your lower number, and then you would use your less than or equal to because we want to include the one. Then we're using X because the domain is X. Don't use any random letter. You're always going to use X for the domain. Then we're going to use our less than or equal to again because we want to include the three. This is a little bit of a throwback to the last chapter. Okay. Now I'm going to change colors to help you with the range. I think that'll be really beneficial. Now the range, remember we learned above, the range deals with the Y value. So when we do the range and we need a variable, we're going to use Y. Domain will always use X. Range will always use Y. So your focus is now on the Y axis, which is your vertical axis. So let's start here with the lower, the lower of the two points. Okay, so see where my pencil tip is, the lower of the two points. And I'm going to go out here, and I'm going to go, hey, that first point starts at 2. Now let's go to the, put your pencil tip on that higher point. See where my pencil tip is? All right, now let's move left towards the y-axis. And what number is that? So our answer for the range is going to lie between 2 and 4 on the y-axis. So I need to write using my inequality symbols. Again, it's a throwback to chapter 2. How do I write a range of numbers? If I want to start at 2 and it, my numbers are bigger than 2 but less than 4, including 2 and 4, how do I write that? Well, start with your lower number. Use your less than or equal to because we're including 2 in this answer. Now remember, because we're working with range, you're going to use Y. So be careful there. And then we're going to use less than or equal to, and we're going to do 4. And that's how you write that. It is not an easy concept. So that's why I took some extra, extra, extra time with you on this. I want to practice this with you in class tomorrow. So come ready with your questions. And when we uh, do our practice, please don't hesitate to raise your hand and ask me, how do you see this? And if we need to do it as a class, then we'll do it as a class. My recommendation is you use two different colors. So either you do highlighter or you just do marker or something where you can track the X in one color and the Y in the other. I think color coding will help you see it better. Okay, I may be wrong about that. You may just totally not understand anything I just said, and I am so sorry if I confused you. I would take a break from this video and, and go on to the next one if I've assigned it, and then come back to this one and listen to it again, okay, if it's really been a struggle for you to follow me. Hopefully not. I hope I've been easy to understand. So bring your questions to class, and thank you for listening. Oh, I did have a code word for you before you totally cut me off. Code word is sand. I miss the beach. Sand is my code word.